Wimborne Town and Didcot Town drew 1-1 at the Cuspery today in an entertaining game in front of 206 spectators. Um, Taylor Leonard kept his place from last week's game at uh, Wantage and Mark Ford came back into the starting, starting lineup with Sam Beeson dropping to the bench. Dan Sullivan, after making a start last week uh, at, okay, at Wantage, no dropped yeah. to the bench with fit again Jack Lupton stepping up, uh, taking his place in, in, in midfield. So we, we reverted to um, James Stokoe and Mark Ford uh, playing up front in a 4-4-2 in a formation. Wimborne playing against the slight breeze in the first half uh, showed, up, showed up well early on. Uh, on eight minutes, Jack Lupton took a nasty kick on the head, uh, no, no malicious intent at all, in, in the penalty area. Claims for a penalty and a foul, but I don't think there was anything in it. It was just unfortunate. But three minutes later, Wimborne took, took the lead, and it was James Stokoe at the far post benefiting from a bit of a mix-up in the Didcot defence. The ball bounced, and he rose first to, to nod it past the keeper. Uh, at this point, I've written down that Taylor Leonard was showing up well on the left. I thought he was having a, a, a good game. But as the first half went on, Didcot came more and more into the game and were having much more of the possession. On 29 minutes, a free kick on, on wide on the right for Didcot troubled uh, the Wimborne defence, uh, but was headed over, and, and this was a foretaste of things to come before half time. Billy Maybury was a power for Wimborne in midfield, and that, I'm sure that's now his best position. And he, 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 he looked really strong, winning a lot of balls, good ball distribution. At this stage, Wimborne giving away far, far too many free kicks in dangerous positions. And what with the Didcot player with the, the long throw, there was a lot of balls coming into the Wimborne defence. Another free kick on 33 minutes to Didcot in midfield was hit through, straight through to Pat, Pat O'Flaherty. And I have to say that at this stage, apart from Wimborne's goal, neither keeper really had, very much, had had very much to do. Um, Woodhouse went off uh, for Didcot on 35 minutes with an injury and was replaced by Andrew Ballard. And on 37 minutes, Jack Lupton was spoken to for another free kick, but uh, no yellow, no yellow card was shown. James Stoko, however, was shown the yellow card on 40 minutes. Uh, after a bit of petulance, Wimborne given a free kick in, in midfield and then James kicked the ball against a player and, and away and the referee produced the yellow for, for both players. And on 42 minutes, Didcot got the, got the equaliser that I think their pressure probably just deserved. Uh, corner to them on the right when it came in. When it came in, it was headed home at the far post by uh, their skipper, skipper Luke Carnell, great man mountain of a man, the number five, who, who was winning most balls in the air. He out jumped everybody to head home at the far post. Uh, Lewis Noble then volleyed just wide after after a ball broke to him from when a ball came in from from across, uh, and the, the half ended with Didcot in the ascendancy, but 1-1. Didcot having slightly more of the possession in the first half, as I say, but uh, a good entertaining game. The wind picked up during the halftime interval, and it was in Wimborne's favour. Very very cold wind as well. But Wimborne undoubtedly had the, had the best of the second half. On 48 minutes, a free kick, uh, 35 yards out on the left for Wimborne. Billy Maybury took it, but it was well defended by the Didcot defence. Didcot defence marshalled by the big Carnell. He did, he did, they did well all afternoon. 49 minutes, another through ball. Troubled the Didcot defence. The defender got to it first, kicked it against the keeper, and it was clear it could so easily have gone the other way. On 55 minutes, a corner on the right, quickly taken. Um, and crossed in by Mark Ford, but James Stoke was just beaten to the header by the by the defence. Jack Lip Lupton picked up a, a yellow on 56 minutes, and uh, uh, Didcot made their second and third uh, substitutions on on the hour mark. A strong shot from Louis Kelloway went just past the, the right hand post on 68 minutes. Wimborne very much in the ascendancy now, having much more of the. Much more of the ball, if anything, though their, their, their pass is just being slightly over hit with the wind and, and, and going through. Um, but that's not to say Didcot were out of it. In a, in a rare attack, Pat O'Flaherty was called upon to make a, a good save on 74 minutes, and then a minute later he had to palm the ball past, past the post for, for a corner. And the corner came in, good header. Uh, when Didcot maybe winning too many headers there, and it was cleared off the line for another corner. Thank you. James uh, James Stoko, a brilliant piece of work on 76 minutes. 
very very unlucky not to find the net just just went over then on 80 minutes a lovely move to, to Billy Mabry on the right and his early and hard cross was just too strong for the Wimborne defence sometimes see at this stage that the game petered out into a draw but this one certainly didn't in fact it got more entertaining as the game went on a knockdown by James Stoko in uh, 87 minutes gave Sam Baston a chance and he turned and fired just over the bar and on 88 minutes a, a, a fierce shot was tipped over by Pat Flaherty for, for a corner it ended 1-1 then, but this was, a, I say, an entertaining game and there was quite a few uh, Wimborne players look, uh, made their mark. I thought Ryan Murray had an excellent game, uh, James Stoko as always, Pat Flaherty was always there when he was called on, but I think my man of the match would be Billy Mabry. Definitely his best position there and he was, he was head and shoulders above most other players in, in midfield today. Onwards and upwards for Wimborne, uh, trip to North Lee on Wednesday night, we hope to see you there. I'm joined by Simon after today's 1-1 draw with Didcot. An entertaining game, Simon, I thought. Yeah, very much so. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't want it to peter out into an end of season um, no, four it draw. It was a draw, but I don't think it's born by any stretch of mm. imagination. Um, I thought we played well today in for longer periods and longer patches than we had done in other games. And um, I said to the guys in there that um, it's sort of testament that we've, we've developed as a, as a group of players because they were disappointed with only getting a draw. Um, mm. Whereas, you know, perhaps earlier in the season we'd have said point against Didcot, may well take that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, Said, just a little bit disappointed that we perhaps didn't get all three, but it was an entertaining game to watch. Um, you know, end to end stuff. I think both sides sort of, uh, you know, didn't hold any hold any back and and went for it. There was no um, you know, sitting around and, and, and just uh, playing the game out. So, uh, yeah, a uh, good game to watch and um, another point for us. But <laughs> just a little bit disappointed we didn't get three. Yeah, there's a, a, a number of players who have made big strides this season for us young lads, and I, I'm thinking particularly of Ryan Murray, who's 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 had a good bit of form at the moment and also I thought Jack Lutzen had a, had a good game today. Yeah this I mean you know as I've said many times before it, it's a challenge to me mm -hmm. to challenge them to, to, to up their mm -hmm. their level of performance to be Southern League footballers mm -hmm. and, and some of them have, have done it um, and some more consistently than others and, and I said that that's my challenge to them from now until the end of the season and we'll be into next year that you know can you keep going. Um, I said to him this morning, uh, you know, before the game, that uh, five games to go, we're safe. You know, would it matter if we forget if the season petered out? Well, yes, it does to yes. me, and I want it to matter to them because, um, you know, I want to hit the ground running in the summer and uh, next season so that we, you know, we're not 18th, 19th in the league. I said that's not a that's not a, uh, a goal for us for next season. Mm -hmm. I believe Ben Thompson, sub goalkeeper, picked up a bit of an injury before before the game. Okay. He cut his knee mm -hmm. playing on uh, on Saturday, mm -hmm. sorry, on Sunday last mm -hmm. week mm -hmm. and um, he opened it up again in the warm-up, mm -hmm. which was a bit a bit awkward because mm -hmm. uh, John Murray, I think, sorry, John Edwards tried to take him around to the hospital but it wasn't open, so mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, we'll have to have a look at that. Uh, I think probably he'll, he'll have to miss out um, on Wednesday because right. it, it opened up and the last thing was to get an infection and in that, so... Um, which is disappointing for him, as I said, I think he's a, a you know a prospect for the future. Yeah, good. Um, any other problems that you know about for, for Wednesday? Um, Injuries or well, Sam Olds um, got a, a shin problem when he was on the bench today. Mm -hmm. he, he wasn't ever going to feature. He just wanted to come along and have some treatment and have a, a run around. So I think Sam's probably doubtful for, for Wednesday, so we may need to get another couple of bodies in. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got what, three away games coming up now. Sure. So again, you know, my, my challenge to the players will be the same as, you know, go out there and, and play the same against mm -hmm. North Lee, the same against Tottenham, and the same against it's short, but, you know, short yeah. Yeah. Um, and slim those slim, slim bridges, bridges yeah, yeah. And, 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 and those kind of performances because as I said we look like a good Southern League side there. Yes. Yeah. Um, whereas before sometimes we've looked like a, a side just sort of hanging on and trying to get something out of the games. Whereas today as I said uh, we were positive in most of the things we did. Um, needed just a little bit of quality um, in the last third that maybe would have would yeah. have got us away from from, yeah. from Dick and got us that goal, but uh, nearly came in the last minute. And I was right behind Ant Walters' uh, yeah. shot, and it was arrow into the corner and just faded away at the yeah. end. So yeah. that would have been a fitting finish to the game would, for us. But, would. Um, but you know, 206 people here today, good entertaining game. I mean, that can't be bad. So uh, you you you. you delivered for the crowd here today and I, I think that's uh, that you know when, when we look back to the sort of dark days of three months ago I think that's uh, that's progress isn't it? Yeah it is I, well as I said all, all of those guys in there that have been you know with us you know for the last sort of two three yeah. months 
you know, we've had a relatively settled side or settled yeah. squad, and I think that's been reflected in the performances. Yeah. And like I said, they're disappointed that we only got a point today. Yeah. So I think that's in itself shows that we've we've made some strides. So well, congratulate them for us, please. Sam. Will do. Thanks for your time. Cheers, Cheers.